Welcome to a safety video. Well, a smoke alarm and a carbon monoxide alarm come as standard in caravans and motorhomes. Well, we've had this caravan eight years, so that means that carbon monoxide alarm is eight years old. So today, I'll be talking about carbon monoxide alarms and replacing the one in our caravan. Well, what prompted me to do this video is we've got a couple in the house and I thought, well, I wonder what date's on them. So I had a look and they're well overdue for replacement. Uh, and they are mains interlinked with battery backup. So, and then I thought, well, what about the one in the caravan? And that's why we're here today, looking at carbon monoxide detectors or alarms. Uh, so it's not a case of just changing the battery and then it all, they'll be all right again until the battery wants changing. They have got a lifespan to them and there becomes a, a, a time when they are no longer monitoring any potential carbon monoxide uh, levels within the air around us keeping us safe like in the caravan to take it off all i need to do is slide it up and it comes off the bracket carbon monoxide is a highly poisonous gas and it's got no color taste or smell and it's produced from fossil burning fuels such as uh, coal wood oil gas and if that appliance isn't burning efficiently uh, or the flue or chimney's blocked, that's when you get your carbon monoxide. Uh, and in your caravan, you've got your gas hob, your gas oven, your fridge might be running on gas, uh, your gas uh, space heater, room heater, your gas water heater. You can even get carbon monoxide from uh, car exhaust fumes, uh, gas barbecues, charcoal barbecues. And this is why we have uh, carbon monoxide alarms. Inside the unit is a sensor and after a certain period of time the sensor no longer detects gas and that's why you have to replace the whole unit. Well this one says replace seven years after installation. Don't know whether you can make that out or not, it's not focusing very well. Um, what I've done is purchased a new one. It's a fire angel, same as this one. And this one's got a digital display. I'm hoping this will fit straight onto the existing bracket. The digital display shows the parts per million of gas in the air. I'll read you this short table. Uh, this is the effects of different levels of carbon monoxide poisoning on the body. At 100 parts per million, slight headache, nausea and fatigue, flu-like symptoms. 200 parts per million, dizziness and headache within two to three hours. And 400 parts per million, Nausea, frontal headache, drowsiness, confusion and rapid heart rate. Risk to life after over three hours of exposure. And finally, 800 parts per million. Severe headaches, convulsions, vital organ failure, death possible within two to three hours. So you can see how important it is to have a carbon monoxide alarm. And it shows you the different alarm response times depending on the parts per million detected. That's the table. Open the, the box up and see what we've got in there. Fixing screws. User manual. piece of cardboard and the alarm what's it say here pull tab to remove metal clip and enable product so it looks like if you pull that metal clip out it activates it uh, this old one has got replaceable batteries uh, this new one has got a seven year sealed in battery. And it's also got a large multifunction LCD digital room thermometer. It looks like it's not going to fit that bracket because the screw spacings are different so I'm gonna to have to take that bracket off 
and, uh, and refit the screws. Now it doesn't come with a bracket, you have to fix the screws in at 65 millimeter spacing. And the screw should protrude three millimeters to allow the detector to be slotted on. Using a, a bradle to uh, make a pilot hole. I've got to put the screws in higher up because uh, these are too low. That's 65 millimetres. It's got the same distance from the ceiling. About 42, 42. That's it fitted. So what I'll, what I'll do is pull this pin out. That should now be activated and I'll take this sticker off. That's it, job done. You have to toggle through it to change the display from parts per million to room temperature. What I would point out is the test button is only there to test the sounder and circuitry and the, and the uh, battery system. It's not there to test the sensor. Um, there is a section in the manual about the sensor test and it says it should only be performed annually because excessive testing will shorten the life. Uh, there are aerosol CO test kits you can buy or you can use an incense stick. That's the sensor test. We're safe for another seven years. One thing to bear in mind is if you've purchased a used caravan or motorhome, check the date on the back of your CO alarm to see if the person who fitted it has wrote the installation date in the box provided. Uh, then you'll know whether it's due for replacement. You've got to remember is it's keeping you and your family safe while you're out there touring the great outdoors. I'll quickly show you the mains interlinked CO alarms. These are the ones I'll be using to replace the overdue ones in the house. I'll uh, lay them out and show you how they work when they're interlinked with the mains wiring. I'll show you what comes in the box. You get the alarm, comes with a dust cover and you leave that on during construction and it prevents dust, chemicals and other contaminants getting into it. And I suppose you can also use it when you're decorating. That's the alarm, I've chosen the digital model. And you get fixing screws, instructions, a base. You screw this to your surface and then the alarm just twists into place. And then you get connecting wires. This plugs into the back of the alarm. Like that. And the other end connects to the mains wiring. Oh, and uh, the alarm's got a... Uh, built-in, non-replaceable, rechargeable lithium battery. I've laid out the two alarms with its interconnected wiring and I'll quickly show you how each colour is connected. But what I would say is, if you were installing this in your own home, uh, I would advise contacting a qualified electrician because they've got all the usual tests to do, such as insulation tests and all the other types of tests. So, oh, and I've uh, connected them all together using 224 Wargo connectors. Most electricians probably use these these days in place of the usual chop block with uh, screw terminals. So, let's have a look at it. Power comes in through the twin and earth cable. The brown is the live to this connector, feeds this unit. 
and then it connects to the brown in this three core and earth cable. That connects to the brown on this unit. The blue neutral to this connector feeds this unit and then the grey wire connects the neutral through the three core and earth to this unit. And you should always mark the grey wire with blue tape to show it's the neutral. We keep continuity with the earth with this straight through connector and it terminates at the end of the line because these units don't need to be earthed. The white wire connects to the black wire in the three core and earth, then back to the white wire on this unit. The white wire is the communication wire. When one alarm is triggered, it sends the signal down the white wire, black wire, through to the other alarms on the system. And it uh, sets all the other alarms off. You should never connect the white wire to the circuit protective conductor, the CPC. You should always use three core and earth on interconnected alarm systems. To install more alarms on the system, all you would use is three core and earth from here, and then you'd connect your third alarm, fourth, fifth, and sixth, and so on. Main smoke alarms are connected in exactly the same way and um, with this kiddie system you can have up to 24 alarms on the system and they can be a mix of carbon monoxide alarms, smoke alarms and heat alarms. They're both fitted and working. These are the ones I've taken off, the EI models, they've discontinued this particular digital model so that's why I went for the kiddie ones. So I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you on the next one.